All right, what's up guys? Uh, this is gonna be another informational guide type video, I guess, today, but this isn't gonna be like one like I've done before. It's not gonna be about a specific class or anything. This is kind of gonna be about PvP in general, and I don't mean like, you know, like how to PvP in this game. It's more so gonna be about how classes interact and what PvP is based around in this game. And if you're not too familiar with uh, how PvP in this game is, how it's really balanced, it's really based around what we call a rock, paper, scissors method. Uh, for example, that generally just means one class beats one class, then you know that class beats another, and that class beats the original one. So, for example, uh, I'm sorry. For example, uh, uh, example of this would be fighter beats barbarian, barbarian beats wizard, wizards beats fighter. You know, rock, paper, scissors. It's like that type of thing. Uh, you know, everything has some sort of counter in the meta, and this isn't necessarily true right now but generally that's what this game is based around that's what it always has been based around and i am going to show you guys i'm going to use this right here which is normally the tier list thing i would use i'm going to show you this right here to you know like be able to do a head-to-head -head of the classes to show you what i mean so for example like we talked about before fighter would be first fighter would beat barbarian and then barbarian would beat wizard the reason being is, you know, fighters physically tanky, they have a ton of damage reduction, Barbarian does physical damage, therefore, fighter would beat Barbarian, right? So, fighter beats Barbarian, then, Barbarian, you know, they have a lot of MR, a lot of HP, really large HP pool, they beat the Wizards, they can also chase them down. So, this is what would be like, Barbarian beats Wizard, and then Wizard, for example, magic damage, you know, high mobility class, Fighter doesn't have a lot of lockdown. A fighter has very low MR, usually negative because they're doing solely plate, not including dark plate. So wizard would beat fighter. And this is true throughout almost the entire game in terms of PvP classes. However, there are some issues with this. One being a class like Bard, for example. Like where does Bard fit into like, you know, this rock, paper, scissors style of PvP? Because it's like, what does Bard really like? You know, what does Bard counter? like that hard you know also you could say well Todd you just said in your last video if you watched it or the video before that honestly I don't really remember that fighter doesn't counter barbarian anymore and that's true and that's one of the issues with the balancing in this game is when you add certain things in that make characters beat their counters for example barbarian with warmall beats fighter so that means whenever a barbarian has warmall fighter no longer counters it so how does this fit back in? You know, it's like where, like it throws off the balance of the rock, paper, scissors style. And this is one of the really, really big issues we've seen multiple times is whenever a class is allowed to beat their counter, generally speaking, that class is not balanced and the meta isn't in a good spot. However, when we, when we have that, where every class has like, you know, their own effective counter, the meta is generally much, much better. And one issue that has always been prevalent that's had this issue is cleric has almost always been a counter uh, a class that has no counters they pretty much do everything they have a pretty solid matchup in every class in the entire game and there isn't one class that's like oh they have a cleric we have a like an x that will counter the cleric that doesn't really exist there are ways to beat cleric yes however we don't have like a set uh, counter to cleric in the game for there, I mean, this exists for a couple of reasons. One being, you know, there isn't really any anti heal in the game. Like, sure, you know, you have like a uh, blow of corruption from Warlock, but it's only on one target and it's a melee hit, so it's not really reliable. And I mean, there have been some things added that you definitely could say hurt Cleric, but to say it's an outright hard counter, like, for example, when a barbarian step, like, when a, when a barbarian fights a wizard, pretty much regardless of the situation that wizard is countered 99 percent of the time that wizard will at best be able to run away from the barbarian and most of the time he's just gonna die if he tries to fight him most of the time the wizard will just die to the barbarian if the barbarian like if two equally skilled players the wizard should die to the barbarian or at best be able to run away right and that's how that's how the rock paper scissors format should work it said i am your hard counter i beat you a bard something like ridiculous happening or like a giant gear gap or like a giant skill gap my class beats yours and that's fine 
every class should have something that's good against it. There shouldn't be any class that's countered by everything or any class that's not countered by anything. Back to Cleric. One example of what semi-countered Cleric is this why I'm going to call it a semi-counter was Bard. Bard with the Silence Song. If you got in range of the Cleric and you were able to cast Silence, the Cleric was basically useless for the duration of the fight. Because it's, it's like a six second silence. And let's be real. Fights do not take six seconds sometimes. Sometimes fights only take three or four seconds. Or even less. Sometimes you kill somebody in the first second or two. The fight's instantly over. For example, like, you know, like a ranger or a fighter. Or even a wizard. They get a really good, like, headshot from a crossbow or a longbow. Or even a fireball on a target. Insta-kill them. The fight pretty much ends at that point. Like, that's the fight. Fight's over. It wasn't even a second. It was whatever time it took for that bolt to travel from my crossbow to their head. And, like, that's just, that's it. However, like I was saying with Bard, the reason it's not a full counter is because how reliably are you going to be able to position yourself to get close enough to the cleric to hit him with the silence? It's not every fight. It's not something you're going to do super consistently unless you are genuinely running in and inting to play the song on him. And even then, there's no guarantee you make it to the cleric or, you know, it matters. Because if you die, but you silence him, sure, they're clerics, like, they're down a cleric, but now you're down a bard, right? So it's not a super heavy counter. And this is, like I said, this has been one issue that we've seen for cleric for a very, very long time. For even, even before early access, back during the playtests, we've seen that cleric was incredibly oppressive. Almost every single playtest, this character almost had to be on a team, or your team was just playing down a man. You were playing down the best character in the game that basically wasn't weak in any situation. Cleric was pretty much Bard before Bard existed. Cleric was able to do something in every single situation. They always brought something to the table. There was never a spot where Cleric felt useless. The only time Cleric would feel bad is if you're fighting someone with a Famine, which is the named uh, Horseman's Axe, that gives 100% anti-heal for 20 seconds. But at that point, it's like, that's not really much on Cleric. Like, that's just because named weapons are incredibly OP. But outside of that specific scenario, Cleric basically brought something to the team at all points in time. And now, we still see that. Cleric still brings something to the team. Cleric, there are three characters that really do that right now. And it's Cleric, Wizard, and Bard. Bard's not quite as good as these two, uh, these two because he's been nerfed. And he doesn't always have something. Tranquility was nerfed. So you can't uh, perma-heal your team while you're running around. You do have to sit and rest. Same with Corral of Clarity. No uh, perma-song restore anymore. However, these two characters right here, and the reason Wizard isn't you know as bad about it is because, once again, Wizard does have countered Barbarian. However, if that class isn't in the game or you know, you're not fighting that class, Wizard is very, very hard to deal with. There are other you know workarounds, as in Ranger. However, it's not quite as bad. I, on, I think... Barbarian is a bigger counter to Wizard than Ranger is. because Does Ranger have more kill potential on Wizard? Yes. However, that Ranger has a much higher chance of dying to the Wizard as well. Barbarian basically has zero chance of ever dying to a Wizard if you are geared. If you are geared, then Barbarian is almost always going to beat Wizard. They can throw every single spell in the book at you, and they're just not going to exhaust your HP pool before you get to them and kill them. And that's just always true. Ranger is a much more skill-based matchup, as Ranger has to actually aim their arrows and hit you, and if they get caught by one or two spells, that's it for them. They're gonna die. One stray fireball explosion, one zap, one chain lightning, lightning strike, whatever it be, it's all it takes to kill them. Now, back to what I was saying before. Uh, Bard, like I said, they used to get, like, they semi-counter cleric, they don't really... Even now, with all the Bard nerfs, Bard is not quite as good as it used to be. I think it's still incredibly good. I think it provides so much for the team. I think a lot of people were hopping on this train of, oh, Bard's not that good anymore. They nerfed Tranquility. Bard's going to suck. That's not the case. I assure you, this class is still very, very strong, and it still provides so much. The movement speed buff, the stat buff, the armor buff, which is honestly probably the biggest buff they have. You are just giving your team an extra... 10%, 10 to 15%, I believe. It actually might be a little bit lower, I think, after the nurse. I think around 10% is a solid amount to say. Just say around 10% increase in armor and magic resist, which is just an insane amount. Sure, at the lower ranks, it's not as noticeable for squishy classes. However, if you look at, like, Fighter, Barbarian, and Cleric, who all hit those higher numbers, whenever you put that amount on them, it increases exponentially. Whenever you go from 55 to 65, or even higher, 65 to 75, for example, you get an insane amount of value out of that spell. 
Like, it is not an exaggeration to say that a bard buff can be the deciding factor in a fight. It's like, uh, is Cleric a better character than Bard? Yes. However, does Bard provide just as much? It's hard to say. You know, I think Bard, I think the argument can definitely be made that Bard can provide just as much as a Cleric. However, Cleric will be pretty much providing you second, third, even fourth health bars in a fight sometimes. Bard isn't going to do that. Bard is much more based around, you know, ending the fight very fast because they have no longevity in fights. They don't have healing for you. They just want you to run in with your buffs, you know, really fast with their movement speed and attack speed in the fight instantly. And if fights get drawn out against the Bard, then, you know, they're much, much worse off. Because if, you know, you know, you start taking damage, can't heal it back up reliably. And honestly, that's one of the reasons people run Bard and Cleric is to have the best of both worlds. Then you don't have any extra damage, but it's like you're buffing up one target super hard. So do you really need extra damage outside of that one character? With that being said, you could make the argument for Cleric to say their weakness is also longevity. Because, you know, once they exhaust their spells, what do they do? However, with Clarity Potions, it doesn't really matter. Most of the time, you are not going to run through all of your spells in a fight. That's five protections, five lesser heals, five holy lights. That's a lot of spells. Are you prone to getting third-partied after a fight when you're low spells? Yes, that's a possibility, but that's the case for pretty much any team comp in the entire game. And if that happens, that's not really a class thing. And considering that in terms of balance isn't really, like, you know, worth doing, right? That's just positioning and knowing when to take a fight and when not to take a fight or if you had a risk of third party all right on to the uh on to more so like i said i established we established this baseline of you know like fighter beats barbarian barbarian beats wizard in a healthy meta that's not necessarily the case right now because you know like certain like counters or things that are countered have an answer to what they're being countered by which generally isn't that good and another good example of this for uh would be let's say they gave wizards just like a pen, like penetration on their abilities, right? Like I said, they gave wizards like 20 to 30% magic uh, pen as like a perk. Barbarian wouldn't counter wizard anymore if they did that because barbarians couldn't tank their spells anymore because their uh, magic resist would be getting shredded. And that would mean wizard would effectively have almost no counters in the entire game. And obviously, for obvious reasons, that isn't balanced. Like that is that does not make a healthy game. It does not make healthy PvP setting. And now on a larger scale, Rock, paper, scissors still does apply to actual team comps too. So for example, let's say we have wizard, barbarian, and bard, right? This is a this is a team comp that's played pretty frequently, just classic buff ball. This is very, very good. And now we look at let's look at Ranger, Cleric, Fighter. Generally speaking, this comp here will beat this comp. This is like a this is an example of rock, paper, scissors in this comp. Can this comp right here be beaten? Yes, but for, for all intents and purposes, I can actually show it. I, I wanna, I'd wanna, i like to have all three on the screen, but I can't actually do it because, you know, I have a limited amount of characters here. But, for example, this comp here gets, or this comp here will beat this comp here. The reason being is you have fighter to stall the, you have fighter and cleric, they stall the fight out, which is automatically good against this type of comp. Because, like I said, like we established before, bard comps without a cleric want to end the fight very, very fast. Cleric and Fighter, they provide that longevity to live their initial push. Ranger allows you to play defensive options. For example, if you hold, like you, the ideal way to play Ranger, Fighter, and Cleric is you have a Ranger trapping doorways. Like you hold a room, you trap doorways. If you know they're going to push you, you have your Cleric with an Earthquake. So if they push, you catch them in an Earthquake, and then they have no defensive options. If any of the, uh, these three targets get caught in an Earthquake, they will die to the Ranger. 100%. That is just a guarantee. Even the Barbarian who's tanky he can't walk out of it. He's going to get pelted with arrows. He will die. Same for everything else. Almost no character on this comp can make a play against this one if you're playing diligently and you're listening and you're playing intelligently. That's just matter of fact. Wizard can't get a push. Barbarian can't get a push. The best play they have is this Bard trying to crossbow the Ranger. And even if you do, you have reliable healing in Cleric. So it's not going to happen that often. And more likely than not, the Bard is going to lose that 1v1 to the Ranger at range poke. Bard only has one crossbow shot. Ranger has significantly more consistent DPS. It's not necessarily higher, but it's not far off either. And uh, with that being said, I think that just about sums it up for this video. If I'm not missing anything. I obviously, like, there's more in depth I could go into this, but I kind of want to give you guys a quick guide. 
uh, because, you know, I have a lot of people ask me, like, you know, like, I'm like, uh, you know, I lost this fight or like my comp lost this fight against this one. Like, you know, what could we have done better? And obviously, you know, like this doesn't mean every single time this comp fights this comp that they're going to win. Right. Because that's just I mean, that's not how things work in games. There's outplay potential. There's, you know, gear uh, differences. There's a lot of things that go into determining who's going to win a fight. However, you know, if you're in that counter matchup, you are starting from behind, which means you have to do that much more to win a fight. And I just kind of want to, like, give you guys like, an overview of that, that this show, this works for classes, and it works for actual full team comps as well, where there are things that counter you. And, you know, just, like, just really quick, like, another example of this would be, like, let's say, you know, you have a fully, fully, like, physical damage heavy team comp, right? Like, let's say you're running something like this. Let's say you're running, like, Bard, Fighter, Ranger. You know what counters this right here? Another fighter. You know why? Any like cleric fighter would hard counter this because you are lacking really hard in magical damage. So you basically have no way to kill the fighter. And so that's just like like I said, this is just like any of my tier list videos or any of my team comp videos. I could talk about this for a very long time, and there's a ton of stuff in here that you know actually counters other things, gets countered, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because there's so many different variations of team comps. However, I just want to give you guys, like, you know, a very brief overview of it so you can make your own opinions on it. If you feel like something counters something, you know, that's, you know, that's up to you. This is just to give you guys the information going in. So if you're trying to, like, find a team comp to play and you are struggling with something or whatever, you want to make changes to better deal with something, this right here shows you generally, like, a guideline to follow whenever you're building a team comp for what works. Always consider... Whatever you're making your team, what are we weak to? What are we strong against? And how should we play around? That is the best thing to do to play a team comp. Always know the way you want to play and what you're weak to and what you're strong against. Because if you know what you're weak to and you know what you're strong against, you know like that's already a baseline for knowing how you need to play around those certain teams. For example, if you know you're fighting a team that counters you, sometimes it's best to just not fight them at all. Or only fight them if you find a really good chance. Like, for example, if I'm if I know my team comp can't deal with a wizard, I'm not going to push into the wizard team because that's just a bad, just a bad play on my part. Don't set yourself up for failure. You always have to try to put yourself in the best possible position to win, even if that means playing a way you don't necessarily want to. And if you don't like having to play that way, then maybe you need to switch the characters you play. Like, for example, I've been playing Barbarian recently because playing Fighter feels awful. It's impossible to deal with all these magic damage comps. The way Warlock plays and the way Wizard plays, it is impossible for Fighter to deal with them most of the time. Especially Warlock. Warlock is basically impossible for a Fighter to kill. If you ever get on top of them, they can Phantomize away from you. Uh, if you try to crossbow them down, they'll be literally full health by the time you hit them with the next crossbow shot. However, Barbarian doesn't have that issue. Barbarian takes no damage from them, and Barbarian can run them down. Same thing for Wizards. But yeah, uh, I don't want to turn this into like a ranting about like class balancing video. However, I think, yeah, yeah, that should be it for me for now. Once again, if you have any comments or anything, feel free to leave them down below. I'd be happy to talk about this with you. And if this helped or you'd like to see more stuff like this, once again, feel free to tell me as well. I love doing informational stuff. It's really fun. I feel pretty knowledgeable about the game, obviously, and that's why I like trying to share this knowledge, help you guys learn as well. And uh, if you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. If not, that's okay. Just watching is cool enough. But all right, until next time, boys. Peace.